First question, guys, what is GDS, and how did you end up with such a funky and cool acronym? <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't sound so, quite so cool when you read it out as government digital service, um, but it's a new branch of the Cabinet Office, which exists to deliver public services, public sector information, um, in-house rather than the traditional outsourcing model that governments embraced. Why would you do that? Because we can do it better. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it, there is so much that could be done so much better, and we think that, that can be done in-house. Um, I think as a citizen, I've mostly noticed that government services are very, very well provisioned. <laughs> well, uh, what country do you and, uh, I'm, not, I'm not so sure about this. This weird thing you're 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 do you know, telling. Do you, do you know one of the? I mean, t just thinking about we just caught the at the end of the last talk with this sort of open source. I, I've kind of recently started at GDS after um, working at the Guardian before, and one of the series of unusual experiences I've had going into government is wa walking into people in government departments. It can be very small people with very small local government problems, very small systems, up to kind of absolutely enormous. Uh, enterprise systems in, in very large departments like uh, DWP and HMRC and stuff. And what you see when you say, you know, well, why is this in-house ability important and this open source ability important? Because everything we do, we, we, we're committed to releasing is open source. One of the, things, the common things you see between these very small and very large uh, uh, projects is someone in government who works in government who wants to get something done, who has a business problem or a problem that we all, a, a user need that we all have that they want to serve, surrounded by a large and complex array of integrators, vendors, contracts, and suppliers, because governments outsourced all of that to everywhere, and kind of locked into that. Their, their ability to move or maneuver or deliver services. Are they actually locked into it? Is it partly bullshit? It's a, it's, it's a bit of both. So, I mean, in oh, it's in the contract. We can't change those contracts that Labour signed. Oh, no. It's kind of more an ability thing. It's kind of more, rather than we can't change the contracts, it's okay, so then, well, who do we then go to to implement a system for us? Who do we then go to to advise us on how to do it better? And the approach that that's, that's I think, what our mission is. What, better advice? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can help with that. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so an example would be um, Mike Bracken, who runs GDS, um, in an interview yesterday was talking about what's different about GDS. And he said that we want to move from government procuring systems to government commissioning them. And whether that's that we build them ourselves or that we know what it is we're asking for. It's, it, we need that knowledge to be Is it the focus? Do you think that everyone else will understand that in the way that Bracken does? Or is it just rewrapping the pig and doing business as usual? <laughs> uh, he, he's on the west coast of the States at the moment with, with Francis Maud, who's cabinet office minister. Um, they were invited to meet the usual suspects, so sort of HP, Oracle, and some big systems integrators. Is that, with is them. that good? No, they cancelled it. They cancelled it. They're visiting Joyant. They're visiting Tengen. They're visiting Twilio. Uh, <laughs> and, was, that, was that my sponsors? No, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. I, I was looking at the sign. Um, <laughs> It's a wholesale change. So we're looking at how great web services are built and delivered. And we're and by the way, folks, this is actually real. It's easy to think that, yes, Nick. Sorry, Nick Butler, parish I think, no, no, that's fine, that's perfectly fine. I think one of the things, uh, I'll, I'll sort of dodge it a little bit and then answer it a little bit. I think one of the things that you have to be, uh, but it's kind of where we are, let's, let's be honest, we've just started and we're very small. Now, we're, we're already having an impact in some of the projects that have been commissioned in central government, quite a significant impact in, in some quite large and indeed quite small projects. And the amount of incoming demand that we face, if you look across the whole of central government and then across the local government, is absolutely astronomical. And one of the things that's very important that we resolve over the next, over the coming years, really, is how to effectively manage that demand and provide 
services, abilities, um, communities for people engaging with across government to be able to kind of to be able to flourish and be able to do that kind of thing. It's not like GDS is ever going to come and parachute into a, a particular area, rewrite all the systems, and then go off somewhere else because that's just not scalable and it's not sustainable. Is there? A, is there? A, I mean. Um, I, th I think that. He uh, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't need one. He <laughs> doesn't need. I think. Uh, I think at the moment there's there's um, there's a few opportunities for doing that. I mean, all all of the code and stuff that we're producing is open source and out on the internet. We don't really have GitHub first. GitHub. It's all up on GitHub. Is that, is that the first thing you do, or do you have to go through some elaborate, like... It's, it's free, open source, all on GitHub. You can check it out today and go and run a country. So tell us... How many pull requests have you had? Uh, two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, three. 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 Uh, I don't know, actually. I don't know if we've had that many folks yet. Uh, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> one other example for local councils. Um, we, one of the services that we set up is we import some data that an organization called Local Direct Gov gathers about which local government provided services are provided at what URLs. And we've imported that and you type your postcode in and we can direct you to the right place to get that service where you are. That data is not as good as it could be. And we were contacted today by one uh, web manager for a local council who wanted to know why some of his services weren't listed. And it turned out that updating local direct gov had fallen through the cracks. By making that data more visible, we showed that council that there was a fairly simple step that they could take to tie things together better. And from tomorrow, their data is going to be in and consistent. And actually, we. But I, 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 there's there's much more to be done on that level. Um, uh, it's going to take time. And I think the bottom line is it's going to have to be about people. It's a cultural change. It's a social change. Uh, it's a contractual change. Um, but I, it's actually been really interesting for me. I mean, I'm not going to say that I'm an unalloyed fan of the coalition. But, but their, their engagement on some of this stuff has been interesting. And when, you know, Francis Maud is meeting really small startups. I mean, you know, he said we want to find out how you can use open data. And the guy is turning up at a meeting, uh, you know, people like me. Um, but, but, you know, Amy is an important company in, in open data, but the fact is they're a Shoreditch startup and he's there taking advice from them. Um, uh, they genuinely seem quite consultative, which has been good, and never mind all the sort of tech city marketing bollocks, there's engagement, which is quite good. Very genuine. As well. So, I guess, uh, I guess the, you know, what's, what's in your stack? In the, the stack that's running today? Yeah, what's, what sort of technology are you using? Um, most of the core apps are in Ruby. A mixture of Sinatra and Rails. Um, so we know what you listen to in the office. <laughs> well, it's yeah. true. My, my, it's my, true. Was my name was on one of Matt's slides. So. It's true. Um, we're using a mixture of uh, MySQL and Mongo. Um, we're hosted in EC2. Um, got Nginx, Varnish. There's a whole list on the website. All the fucking hotness, basically. And some Scala. Yes. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's like a 23-year-old like Californian <laughs> architect's wet dream. And, and you're building British government services with that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's quite interesting the level of freedom that we have uh, in terms of selecting the simplest and best tool that we can, that we can effectively do the, the job with. I think it's, it's quite interesting. So on that note, I mean, going back to tools then, you fired the technology vendors, you tell me. Some of them. What about the, the outsourcing people that really own you? <laughs> it's a really interesting question because, so if you want to buy something in the government, traditionally, some software or some system, the amount of momentum that you have to get up is, it, and, and the amount of people that you can easily engage with and have kind of agreements and, and, and sort of routes to market to go, they, they tend to be companies that are absolutely vast and they tend to take on projects that are absolutely vast. And the, the, the whole mechanism of working and specifying is very waterfall. I, I call it shitting a pumpkin. It, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. That's what Shulman with Firestone said about giving birth. Yeah. And, 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 and it's always struck me that's waterfall and in a nutshell. The whole, the whole horse and carriages and everything. But what, one of the things I think that we're, that we're trying to change uh, and, are, and, and are working with right now is it's not just about us a small group of developers sitting in an office in Hoban writing some stuff in Ruby. Because that, again, that's not scalable. We can't 
push that everywhere. It's finding small to medium-sized companies, partners out there in the market and finding ways to engage with them, ways to bring them on, ways to enable. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's all sorts of frameworks. Um, um, they can't hire all of you. Some of you can, can be independent. The procurement processes are not brilliant, but we are at this point in time, but we are we are in our own kind of relatively slow but as fast as we can way making very very significant and quite cutting and dynamic changes inside government as to how we procure talent um, uh, people how do we engage with suppliers customers and, I, and again I think this is a multi-year thing I think it should change over a long period of time but why should uh, five very large companies get all the work it seems ridiculous so how big is the team again uh, how big are we We're there's about 30 people who've worked on the beta, um, which is what we shipped last night. Um, that's a mixture of, of what we're calling content designers. They're the people who craft the words, but they're doing more than that. They're thinking about how they should be presented, how tools can be made rather than using words sort of thing. About 10 developers, um, some product managers. Still a fairly small team, though going forward we're going to be splitting into smaller so teams. So where's, where's, where's the UX specialist? Uh, we have a, we have just taken on some. Because Lisa's not here, so I have to ask you the question. We we've taken on a bunch of designers, um, and we are doing like the amount of user testing that we did around the launch of the beta, particularly with regards to accessibility. I thought was quite phenomenal. I think we're we're extremely uh, proud of that. Our work in that. I think at the moment we've we've done some kind of publishing and citizen facing stuff Th this year if we're going to get serious we're going to have to start taking on transactions um with with citizens and there that kind of whole ux journey becomes uh, really that's sort of weirdly a good link to probably the next talk um thank you so much guys uh i would love to ask you like loads of other questions and i'm sure there's much other information but uh, guys, I think that the point here is that if you're interested in public service provision, and we all should be, because we pay tax, well, some of us pay taxes. So. <laughs> um, uh, it, these guys are exemplars. Uh, you know, to, to Nick's point, Nick's asking, how do we do this? Well, you point your people at them. We can use as an example so that government gets more effective. And I think that's social architecture. So thanks, and track what they're doing, and let's try and not waste a lot of money on bullshit services. And we, we really do need more people. Um, Thayer sitting at dude, the Dude, I've pimped, I've pimped Thayer. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm so trying to get everyone working okay. for you. That's enough. No okay. bitches. No okay. bitches. <laughs> okay, get off the stage. <laughs>